Hello. It looks like you would like to draw an ice cream cone with a pointed tip, like a sugar cone, and a soft serve ice cream. So let's start with that. On your, the left hand side, you are probably going to see the rectangle tool, or maybe you'll see the ellipse tool, whatever the last shape was that you made, that's what's visible. We want to go to the polygon and click on the screen. It'll ask you how many sides you'd like. You would like to use three for a triangle. So click OK. Now that the triangle has appeared, let's check out some of the properties. It should have a white fill, a black stroke for the brush stroke, and a size one or two for the thickness of the line. Opacity should stay at 100, okay? To move your shape, let's go to the black arrow on the left, and you can touch the blue dot in the center, or you can um, touch anywhere on the line to make it bigger, because that's the first step. We'll make this a little bit bigger, and we want it to be narrow and tall, okay? We also, make this a little bit bigger. Um, you want to round the edges just a little bit. We don't want it perfectly pointed. So if I click on this circle inside of the triangle, you can see that I'll pull and the edges of the triangle are going to round off a little bit. And that's what we want, okay? Now it's upside down, so we need to rotate it. We can rotate it by hovering near the corners and getting this curved angle and just spin it around. Or you can flip it by going to the right hand side here and flip vertically and it just turns it upside down. All right, so there is the beginning of our sugar cone. It would be good to have some kind of edging at the top so we're going to go back to our shape maker, but this time choose the rectangle tool. And we're going to click and drag the rectangle shape, making it slightly wider. And then right now you can't see the curve indicators because the shape is too small. So you'll need to zoom in. To zoom in, you take two fingers and just separate them on your trackpad. And now you can see they are there. Now I can pull one and all of them can curve. Remember, if you want to do something unique and you only want to curve maybe the bottom and keep the top straight, you can click on that one dot and then pull that one side in like so, and then pull it down. Or you can do what I originally was going to do was pull all at the same time. Okay, this is what I would like for the top of the ice cream cone. I'm going to pull it down a little bit so that you don't see the bend of the top part of the ice cream cone. I only wanted you to see the bottom. All right, so we're going to add some indicator lines. This line segment does not build a shape, but it will add accents. And I would like to add a texture to the cone, but not necessarily change the colors of each diamond shape in the cone. I just want to add some accent lines. So I draw one and I'm going to copy it. Remember on your keyboard, it's Command C and then return to the command and press V as in Victor. That gives you the same line at the same angle, okay? Now I'm going to need about, I'm gonna guess four or five lines. So I'm going to press Command V, Command V, Command V. Underneath this line, I have multiples. They're just at the same exact angle. So now I go to the black arrow, I touch the shape, and I just pull it apart and just try to stretch it so that, again, it's not going to touch the edge of the cone, I'm just adding some accents. At this point, I need to make sure that they're all various 
length. So I go here. And if you noticed that the pink line shows up, it tells me that the line is in a good angle compared to what it's next to. So seeing that line indicator is good. So I'm gonna zoom out and do this one. All right, so I have all of these lines done. I probably could use one more small one down here and I'm going to copy this small one from the top. So Command C, Command V as in Victor. And it's right here. I'm gonna pull this one down and that pink line tells me it's the correct distance. All right. So I have all of these added. I'm going to select them and make a copy and then flip it so that I have a diamond shape. To do that, with my left hand, I'm pressing shift on the keyboard and I'm going to click on each line separately. Now all of these are selected and I can go to object and choose group. I kind of want them to stay at that angle. I don't want them to separate. And I'm going to make a copy so I don't want to have to adjust individual ones unless I missed something along the way. So I'm going to press Command C. And now I'm going to press Command V. There's the duplicate. But this time I want to flip it horizontally. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this up and create my pattern. I think that's about the angle I want. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. Okay, there we go. So that's the texture of the cone. Again, that won't change the colors, but it will kind of sit on top of the color of the ice cream cone. All right, now I'm ready for some ice cream. I'm going to choose to use the pencil at this point. If your ice cream cone, by the way, is closer to the top, you can select all the shapes and move it by going to the black arrow, clicking over all of the shapes now. It selects everything, go to object, group, and you can move it around, you can make it smaller, you can tilt it if you like. Um, all of those things are available. To draw the soft serve, the actual ice cream itself, I'm going to now switch to the pencil tool. On your keyboard, you can press in as in Nancy, and we're going to draw three curved shapes. And it has more of a point on this side. Now this might take a little bit of practice depending on what type of shape you want for your ice cream. Notice that as I came to the close of the shape a little zero popped up next to the pencil that means that shape is closed and that's what we want. For now I'm going to make the fill white. All right. Now before I draw my next shape I notice that this one is still selected it has the blue dots around it. I need to unselect that, so I hit Command Shift A. To get rid of the selection. All right, now I'm drawing my second one and I'm going to start with zooming in. I'm going to trace this line a little bit. Because I do want them nestled in next to each other. And I get out to the side and I make a little curve that's pointed up. And then I curve it out here to, oh, there's the zero, it's popping up. All right. So now that is my second shape. A couple of things I want to tell you about. It's not exactly the way I would have liked the shape. So you can adjust it by going to the black arrow. You can make it more narrow. You can make it a little bit wider. This is going to sit on top, so I'm going to change the fill to white. 
so that it covers what's underneath. I can, um, to move it, you'll click on the line itself. You can bring it down. And let's just talk about the shape. You see that little dent on the side? Well, remember that this eraser doesn't work very well with this part of the program of Illustrator. It's used for other things. But in order for us to fix that line, we could either delete the line. It's already selected. I could hit delete on the keyboard and get rid of it and redraw again. Or I could fix it. And to adjust it slightly, I could press minus on the keyboard. That's going to bring me to this pen tool. I can zoom in. I'll press minus and that shows me all the little bumps that I created. Now, I don't like the way this one bump is going in, so I'm going to click on it and remove it. I'm going to also click on this one. Okay, so that will smooth out the shapes a little bit. All right, let's go back to my pencil tool and get rid of this selection, Command Shift A, and I'll draw my last part of the icing. I'm going to go to the top here and create that type of a shape. And let's see. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and bring it down just a little bit. All right, and I'm going to fill it with white. All right, I would say that looks pretty good. At this point, I could add color to each of the segments and I could make all of these lines instead of black, I could make them brown. And then I would add a shape in the background. Here's an example of my finished ice cream from earlier today. Same process. Notice that I just have three different colors and I kept the lines brown for the entire ice cream here. You certainly can choose to do that. When you are done with your drawing stage, you can add a shape behind your design um, just to kind of add a little bit more color. When you're done with the basic shape of your ice cream, you're going to start to add your theme. So use all the things we practice, the pencil tool, the shape maker, copy, paste, flip, to add your own personal theme to your ice cream. All right, good job. I look forward to seeing your final project.